Okay, you can see the screen. Yeah. Okay. So I started lots of lots of motion. Um, so you might have already come across this no lots of motion in earlier classes. Okay. So if I consider just a minute. Uh, Bobby, are you switching off your mic or what? Sir, it's on. Right. So, if you consider body as a system, so what will you consider as input and what is output? The output is motion. So, what should we consider as input? Force. Yeah. Okay. So, kinematics is study of motion. There is the output part, and uh, studying motion means we have to find the position uh, as a function of time, velocity, like that. Okay, and what is producing this motion is force. So now we'll concentrate on the input side. What is producing this force, and what are the and how the body responds to this force? Okay, the previous chapters we just study the kinematics. Okay, so to keep a body in uniform motion, uh, say this is a ball and this is the earth surface and it's moving, say, two meters per second. Is there a force re required to move this ball at this velocity? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, right. So, these are the set of experiments that's being performed. You can see an inclined plane here, right? This is inclined plane one, and this is the second inclined plane. Yeah. Okay, so on top of the inclined plane, there is a marble. Okay, marble because the friction is small. Okay, so it comes down to the surface, and after that, it climbs up this inclined surface. Both the inclined surfaces are the same, in the sense the inclination is same. So if it is Release from the height of H. Up to what height will this marble go on the other plane? H. Same H, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you explain that? Um, so, conservation of momentum. Conservation of energy. Yeah. Because initially the energy was MGH. Okay, and the velocity at this point is zero because the marble is released from the top. And here also, yeah. when it reaches the maximum point, the velocity is zero. So the energy will be whatever is the height, say H1, and these two should be equal. So which implies H1 should be same as H. Okay, we are assuming that the surface is frictionless. Otherwise, there will be some loss of energy. Okay. Now suppose I reduce the inclination of the plane like this. Okay, then up to what height will increase now in the second plane? Say H2. How do you relate it to H? This H1 is H. What about H2? Uh, so I think it uh, it will cover the same height. Yeah. Because again by energy conservation, at the topmost point where the velocity is zero, the potential energy is mgh2. And that should be same as the initial energy, which is mgh. Okay, so if it keep on decreasing the inclination and finally make it flat, okay, uh, this thing will never stop because it will not climb to the height h. Okay, it's coming. It's coming to the first plane. After that, the second plane is like this, horizontal. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. In this plane, this marble will keep on moving. It will not stop. Okay. So this marble is. Sorry. Yes, sir. Carry on, please. So, uh, whatever the speed here, say uh, five meters per second, will keep continuing like that. At this point, if it was five meters per second, it will keep continuing at five meters per second for a very very long time. But here it will be less. Here will be three meters per second. Here will be four. But after it reaches the bottom point. What is the velocity? Will keep continuing. Okay. So, yeah. How do you explain that? There is an increase from increase in velocity from here to here, right? From this point to this point. Okay. But from from here onwards, there is no increase in velocity. From here to here, the velocity is increasing. But after yeah. after it reaches the horizontal point, the ground, when the level is not changing. The velocity is constant. Yes, sir, because there is no force acting. Force due to what? Gravity, a gravitational pull of the Earth. Yeah. So at, at this point in this plane, gravity is like this mg. Okay. So there is a component okay. of mg around the plane, and there is a component of mg vertical to the plane. Okay. So this along the plane. That is the one which is increasing the velocity along the plane. Okay. Okay. So once you reach this horizontal position, the weight is mg downwards. There is no force in the horizontal direction along the direction of velocity. This is zero, zero newton. So there is no force along the direction of motion. Once it reaches the horizontal level, that is when the speed is not changing. It's remaining at five. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, Dakshi, you follow? Yes, sir. Okay. So the thing is, um, so from this we can conclude that, see, in the horizontal part there is no force, right? F net is zero. Once it reaches the horizontal part. F net is zero, so from that we can conclude that the body at rest, say, which is at zero meters per second, and the body moving at say five meters per second, both of them have F net zero. If you have another object which is not moving initially, it will remain at rest only. If initially the velocity is zero and no force is applied, it will remain at rest. But if there is a body which is moving at five meters per second, And there's no net force acting on it. Then it will keep maintaining its velocity constant. Yeah. So, Galileo's important understanding is the body at rest, okay, and v equal to constant. Both are same. Same in the sense, f net is zero for both. Okay. So this is an, another type of inclined plane where it, where this is curved. Okay, the marble is released from here. It, it will reach the same height. This H one is same as H. If this is H, okay, and this H two is also same as H. And this is if it is flat, it will never stop. Okay, Galileo actually did this experiments physically, and then he came to this conclusion. That a body at rest and a body moving at constant speed, they are equivalent. In the sense, the net force acting on them is zero. Okay, so from this, he created something called law of inertia. Inertia means resistance to change. Here, the thing which is not changing is the velocity. Okay, so when the net force is zero. Velocities constant. Okay, so the thing, the thing which is resisting to change is the velocity when the net force is zero. Okay, this is what is law called of law of inertia. This is given by Galileo. When external force is zero, velocity is unchanged. Okay, 
Newton's first law of motion. So Newton's first law of motion is he basically built extended the ideas of Galileo. So Newton's first law of motion is basically Galileo's law of inertia. Okay. okay. Which states that F net equal to zero implies that implies what? Uh, it uh, the velocity will be constant or it will be zero. Yeah, zero is always a constant, right? Yeah. What does constant mean? Not change with time. Yeah. Not change with time. And what is the other one? Uniform, right? What does uniform mean? Yeah. Uh, so same thing, right? Constant uh, with time. Dutch. What is what constant, is uniform? Constant with time. No, not change its space. Or, or the same. Okay. Not change its space. See, space and time are equivalent quantities. Okay. The body is moving from one point to another point. So time is changing, even space is changing. Okay. But there are situations where only space can change and only time can change. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll come to that later. It'll become more clear later. Okay, here there are two examples. One is a book uh, resting on a table. What are the forces acting on it? Friction. Friction, right now it is zero, right? Friction, you say friction is a... Gravity. Zero. Yeah, gravity. Reaction force. Yeah, and the reaction force. Friction will come when you, when you try, to, try to move it. Right now, we are not... Suppose you apply a force like this. Okay, then friction force will start acting. Okay, but if applied force okay. is not there, it's not trying to move, so there won't be any friction force. All right, so in this book case, what is the velocity? Zero. Zero. In the second case, it shows a car. What do you think is the velocity? Showing us this one now, so it's moving. Okay, it first thing is can be anything. not zero, not equal to zero. Yeah, so it is constant, it's given it's constant. That means that net force is zero. Net means there are component forces, right? So, what are the component forces acting on the car? What are the forces acting on the car? Friction. Yes. And reaction force of that. That will be normal direction. Reaction okay. force will be normal. That will not affect the horizontal motion, right? Mg and normal are vertical direction. In horizontal direction, there is friction. After that, if only friction is there, it will stop, no? Only net force yeah. is zero, it will, it will be to can maintain velocity constant. So the uh, force of the engine. Yes. Fuel is burned, no? Yeah. Force of the engine. Right. So constant velocity, the net force is zero. Okay. In, in the case when the ball is rotating and it is stopping, it is stopping because there is actually net force, which is the friction force. That's why in, in realistic situation, when a ball is rolling, it will stop after some time because net force is not zero. There is a friction force which is reducing the velocity. So in the case of marble, it's very smooth, but if you make this incline very, very long, actually, even in this one, after a very long distance, it will stop because friction is not zero exactly. It's very, very small, but it's, that's why it goes to a very, long, very large distance. Okay. So this is yeah. like friction is very, very small. So it goes very, 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 very long. So from that he comes to that, if it is 100% smooth, there is zero friction, then it will never stop. Okay. Uh, okay, that is that is first law. When the net force is zero, the velocity is constant. Okay. Second law is, before coming to second law, first you have to understand a term called momentum. 
So your body will have a mass, right? And if it is moving with the velocity, with the velocity be b. So we can combine these two quantities and define a new quantity called momentum, which is m into v. Velocity is a vector, mass is a scalar, and scalar into vector is a vector. So momentum is a vector. Okay. So momentum will increase if mass is more, if mass increases or the velocity increases. Okay. So momentum can increase either by increasing the mass or increasing the velocity. And the direction of momentum is same as the direction of the velocity. So we define a new quantity called momentum, which is mass into velocity. Right. The second law states that if the momentum of a body is changing, rate of change of a quantity is given by d by dt of that quantity. Okay, that is equal to the F net acting on the body. D by dt notation you don't know, right? You can understand as dp by dt. dp is a change in momentum divided by change in time. But, so that is rate of change of momentum, which is the net force. Right? If you write delta, if you write delta p by delta t, then it is a average sort of a force. Okay, but when delta t tends to zero, this will become dp by dt. Okay, is that clear? Yes, sir. Dash, is it clear? I already told you differentiation, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so net force acting on a body is rate of change of momentum. So you can get first law from this statement itself, from the second, from the statement of the second law. In this, if you put F net equal to zero, implies, what does it imply? If I put F net equal to zero, dp by dt is zero, right? So with d by dt of something is zero means what? Anybody? F net is, is zero, that means dp by dt is zero. So what does that mean? Yes. dp is equal to dt. Oh, zero, or right? dp is zero, or dp is zero. Ah, dp is zero, that means p is constant. When dt is change in time, dp is the corresponding change in momentum. Okay, when f net is zero means dp is zero. That means p is constant. And this is first law, right? First law is, yeah. first law is this only. F net equal to zero means velocity is constant. When p is zero, uh, p is m into v. M is not going to change. So velocity is constant. So uh, you can see Newton's first law is a special case of Newton's second law. Right. Okay. Uh, free body diagram. Uh, you already come across this term, free body diagram? No, sir. Okay. So this is the table surface. I've kept yeah. the mass, mass M here. Now what I'll do is I'll just take this mass M. Assume that there are no other uh, objects or bodies in contact with it. But these two should be equivalent. Okay. So for that to be equivalent, I'll replace other bodies by the corresponding forces. Okay. The presence of this table, I'll replace by the force of normal reaction. Okay. And it has got a weight, right? Mg. Yeah. Okay, so this body M is now free of other bodies, but the effect of other bodies is being replaced by the forces, which other bodies will exert on it. Okay. So this is the concept. So you are making the body free of other bodies, but your the effect of that is put in terms of the forces. And the normal reaction will match uh, Magnitude will match some mg, right? So whenever you draw the vector, the length of normal should approximately match the length of mg. 
because both are equal and opposite. Right? So this is free body diagram. Daksh, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So now let us consider this uh, example. Uh, just take a pen and paper and try this one. Ten kg horizontal table gravity ten meter per second square box of ten kg three bar diagram of the box. Value of course exerted by table on box course exerted by box on table. This is the full situation, this is the box. Okay, so when he says free body diagram, you just have to take only that body. It should be free of other bodies. So this is the box. So what are the forces acting on it? Normal force and gravitational force. Normal force and mg. The lengths are approximately equal because they are equal in magnitude and directions are opposite. Okay, find the value of force exerted by the table. Okay, this is Free body diagram of the box, right? Can you draw free body diagram of the table? Just try this one free body diagram of table. What are the forces acting on the table? Weight of box. Okay. And its uh, own gravitational force, uh, its own weight. And normal. Okay. Weight of box, let me put in B into G. Okay. And then weight of the table, right? So, yeah. M T to G. Normal where? Uh, upwards from here right yeah okay let me divide it by n by 2 and n by 2 let me call this ng by 2 ng because it's between the table and the ground right uh, actually much uh, if you want to be more precise so writing the weight of the work should be normal reaction Because the interaction between the box and the table is a normal reaction. Weight is there okay. because of gravity. Okay. Okay. So this N MTG is because of the interaction between the table and the earth. Okay. This N is because of the interaction between the box and the table. Right? And it's normal reaction by symmetry will get divided into two between the two legs. Or four legs means will be MTG by four. Daksh, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, what is the force exerted by the table on the box? It's a normal reaction. The interaction force between the box and the table is a normal reaction. And that is equal to mass of the box into G. Which is equal to 10 into 10. 100 Newton, right? And then C is force exerted by the box on the table. Force by box on table. That is again the same normal reaction. Yeah. Okay. This is just this first example, right? Uh, okay. Now we introduce this concept of spring. Uh, before string, I think we'll just, uh, 
uh, insert one more thing. Uh, okay, there is something called string. If I have a mass m on a rigid surface and have a string here, and I'll try to pull the string with the force C F. Okay, so in this case, if you want to draw the free body diagram with the mass m, what are the forces acting on it? Free body diagram of m. Okay, one force is weight, right? Gravity. You have to show all the forces, both horizontal and vertical. And you need the force. What the towards the right direction, the force and then the friction too. Yes, friction here. And this force, uh, it's represented as T because F will transmit the force to the block via this tension in the string. Because of this force and the mass, there will be tension in the string. And tension has, can always pull. Okay, so this force is called T. Right. The property of string is can transmit uh, pulling force, pulling force is called tensile force, okay, but cannot uh, push. Got it now? If you try to yeah. push the string, it will slack. It will not transmit the force. Right. So this is the property of the string. Okay. But if you have a rod instead of a string, then can it uh, push and pull? If you have a rod, say. It can pull, right? I can pull using, using a rod. What about pushing? Yes. Okay. You can push. You can push. Yeah. So that is the difference between string and a rod. Got it? Okay. Next we'll move to spring. Right. A spring will have a natural length. Okay. So when the spring is natural in the sense it's relaxed then there won't be any force in this part. It will be a relaxed question so that the force, or uh, you can call the tension, same as tension only, the tension will be zero. But you try to compress this spring from the natural position, this is the natural position, okay? So then there will be a force in this direction. Got it? And similarly, when yes. you try to stretch it, there will be a force in this direction. So what can you say about the direction of force? It's always towards toward yeah mean. Yeah, force is always towards mean position. Right, Bhavya? Yes, sir. Okay. If I take this as my x-axis and this may origin zero, okay. So when x is negative. Uh, when you are compressing, it is negative, right? And force is towards positive direction. While compressing, x is negative because it is on the negative side and force is towards the mean side, so the direction is along the positive direction. While elongating, x is positive and force is negative. The direction of the force. In 1D motion, you can uh, get the direction by the sign of the quantity. You don't need actually vectors. The concept of direction can be captured by sign. Plus is one direction and minus is another direction. In 1D, there are only two directions. It's a straight line, right? Either on right side or left side. So one side you call positive, other side you call it negative. So the direction of uh, sense of the direction is captured by the sign of the quantity. Okay. So x less than means zero means the displacement towards the left on the negative side. In that case, the force will be towards the mean position and the direction is positive. While elongating, the displacement is positive, it's towards the right. And the restoring force is 
towards the negative side and this force is called restoring force because it restores the condition towards the natural natural position yeah. and uh, if the stretching is more then the force is more okay so force is written as k into x where k is a constant that depends on the spring some springs will be tight for that k will be more some springs will be loose in the sense with little bit of force it compresses more okay for that k is less and there is a negative sign here if we go to minus k into x can i explain this negative sign why the negative sign is there the restoring force of the spring is minus k into x where k is greater than 0 Why is the negative sign there? Direction is opposite. Yeah, because of this one. When x is less than zero, this guy is positive. When x is positive, if it's negative, that information is captured in this sign. Right. Okay. Now do this example. Again, we have to draw the free body diagram. So can you um go back to the previous slide once? Yeah. So um. So so we can take the value of k as the mean. No, no, no. X is the mean position. Um, the value of k is how far we take it. Or k is a constant. Okay, so can you, okay, you just be any constant? Okay. K is a constant. Depends on the spring. If the if the spring is say tight, okay, okay, the value of k will be high. Okay, the unit of k is the unit of k is newton per meter. Okay, that means if it is if k is two, it means that to compress the spring by two meters, I have to apply two newton force. Okay, so if the spring is loose, it will be say one newton per meter. Just by applying one newton, I'll be able to change. I'll be able to compress the thing by One meter. Okay, if k is five means I, I need to apply five newtons to compress the spring by one meter. Okay, so if the value of k increases, then the spring is tight. Yes. Okay. Now try to uh, again it's just a free body diagram. Spring attached to just some smooth floor. So the floor is smooth, no friction. Spring constant k. Gravity is there g. Uh, box is pushed. This is the box. This is the one is the box. Horizontally. Uh, by distance x. Held at rest. Draw the free body diagram of the box. Just do do it in a paper. So I'm trying to compress so the spring will. Try to push it back. This force of the spring, right? Because I'm pushing it towards left, so it's going to compress. So the spring is going to try to push it back to the right. Is there any other force? Um, gravity. That's in the vertical direction. Yeah. Yeah. When you're drawing figures, you have to show everything. So this will balance the normal force. Any other force? Um. Bhavya. Uh, sir, the reaction force of the spring. No, no, that is force of spring, right? Whatever force is yeah. exerting on the block. See, if this is the only force, then the block will move towards the right, no? Because there is a net force in the right direction. But, yeah, yeah. So the uh, block is held at rest. So some force should be balancing it, right? Yes, sir. So what is that force? And is it getting the force, no? Yeah. Okay. Ah, huh. that force is compensating to the spring force. The hand will feel a force. 
capacitor valve. So the thing is compressing the huh. So what is the value of this force? He's asking find the force, find force exerted by hand on the box. So what is the value of this force? F spring. The property of the spring is given, no? If you got K into X, you have to use that. Use the property of the spring. When the spring is compressed by X, it will exert a force of K into X. So that we have to use. So what is your spring here? Uh, he has given the uh, compression is X, right? Yeah. Okay. He has not given uh, what is the compression. Okay. Let the comp if the compression is X, then the force will be how much K into X. K is given as much as spring constant is K. Okay. Yeah. If the compression is X, then the force will be K X. So the force exerted by the hand is should balance this one, which is equal to K into X. Okay. Action reaction pairs. Um, the, the vertical pairs and the... Yeah. Uh, sir, won't friction also be there? He said there is no friction. So oh, wait, oh, he said there is no friction. Because he does not want to complicate now. Now he is just focusing on the spring. So he does not want to include the friction. Okay, this is um, one pair. Then the force of the compression and the force... The force of the compression and the okay. force of the hand. Here, here there is some interaction of spring and the block. So you can call it F spring and uh, reaction between the block and spring. Okay, and similarly here, uh, the, this is a reaction force, a reaction between hand and box. Okay. It's uh, this thing will try to push the hand this way and hand is trying to push the block this way. Okay, so this thing is both. No big deal. You just uh, see whenever there is interaction between two surfaces, there is an action reaction. There are three contacts, no? One is the block with the ground or table. Another is the contact between the block and the box and the hand. Another contact is with the box and the spring. Okay, so basically the three contacts. Okay, and the net thing is in equilibrium. So all these forces of the contacts will be in balance. So there are three pairs. Is that okay? Here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now it's getting a little bit complicated. Try to do this one. Box of weight this much. You know what's an equilibrium, no? Equilibrium means acceleration is zero. It's not moving. Acceleration is zero, meaning it can still move, right? Yeah, yeah, but... Uh, uh, right, okay. That is static equilibrium. Okay, one of the cases of uh, not moving, acceleration zero is V is zero. Okay, in this case, V is also zero. Let's complicate the thing later. Uh, right now, it means velocity is it's at rest. Strings OA and OB. OA is horizontal. This is horizontal. Find tension in both the string. Is it doable? String will always pull. Right now I'm showing the force acting on the weight. Okay, so it is trying to pull the weight.
So what is the force that is balancing this 10 to 3 Newton? Um, the force of both the strings combined. Uh, you know how to resolve a vector, no? If there is a vector A and this angle is theta, I can split it two components. One is this horizontal component AX, another one is this vertical component AY. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. So what is AX equal to? A cos so is sin theta. A cos theta. Adjacent side is cos theta. Oh yeah. Theta. Angle theta is so this is A sin theta. So T2 we can split in two components. So that is 60 degrees. Then this is also 60. Alternate angles, right? Yeah. In other words, so string is making an angle 60 with the horizontal. So this also horizontal. So the angle with the horizontal is same. So T2 cos 60. Right? And T1 is T2 sin 60. So from there you get T2 as 20 root 3 and then T1 you can put it back. T1 is uh, root 3 times two by two that is 30 newton okay. is it correct what about the next one Second thing you can do downward force is ten to three and then let me call this as T two and let this tension be T one. Okay, so T two cos sixty. No. First, so carry on, carry on, carry on. This is T two sine sixty, and similarly, this one is the vertical, right? So. This angle is again theta. So P1 cos 60 is the top. P1 cos theta, and this is one. Is this free body diagram correct? Bhavya? Yes, sir. Free body diagram is correct. No? This theta is the body. Yes. Okay. Always uh, uh, remember this, look at this angle, 60 degrees is the horizontal, right? Yeah. And third, and T2 is the vertical. Yeah. Okay, so if you remember the little, the chance of making mistakes are less. So that way, this T2 is the horizontal. So the horizontal component is cos 60. Okay, and this T1 is making theta with the vertical. So the vertical component will be T1 cos theta. Okay. So just recognize the angle as either with the horizontal or with the vertical. Right? Dutch, is it clear?
So can you write this uh, uh, two equations, one in the vertical direction, one in the horizontal direction, and you have to find uh, find the condition for the minimum tension uh, for T1 to be minimum. So you have to find the value of theta for the T1 is minimum. So just write the two equations. T1 cos theta plus two cos sixty that is half equal to T1 and theta. Right. So okay, you can eliminate T2. T1 cos theta. T2 you can write as 2 T1 sin theta. Is this equation correct? Yeah. One into cos plus two sine put ten to three. Ah, uh, right. So, ah, uh, you should be knowing it. How to proceed from here? When you have a combination of cos plus sine or sine plus cos, and you want to find maximum minimum of it, there is a standard standard way of doing it, right? Yeah. What is A? Suppose I want to find A. Okay, let it be sine only. Just no matter. A sine. I'll go. To, oh, oh, sorry. I have to go to the washroom. I'll be back in like just one second. Yeah. So I have function like this. And it has the variable A and B are constants. I want to find maximum minimum of it. A standard way of doing it, which you already done it. Can you recollect? Um, sir, I think we had to square them or something. No, this we can write a sine of something. Okay, and then the sine maximum value is this one. Yeah. Uh, so how how do you write a sine as one quantity, one angle? I don't remember. Divide by square root of a square plus b square. <laughs> this is a square plus b square. Okay, and uh, this is the triangle. Yes, cross right. This is B. This is square root. And this angle T. Angle angle phi. New angle phi. So this thing will become cos phi. And this thing will become sine phi. The so whole thing is root into sine of theta plus phi. Yes, no. Yes, sir. So the maximum value of this is square root of a square plus b square. Okay. Yes. So the maximum value of this is square root of one plus four, so root five. Oh, this case asking minimum value, right? Yes, sir. Minimum value when this is maximum. T one will be minimum when this factor is maximum. Right hand side is constant. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So T minus. So two into root fifteen. Is it 
it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, I just have to check whether this is correct or not, otherwise it will be a problem. Let me just check it. Daksha, you are back? Yes, sir. Uh, see, if there is a function like this, uh, cos theta, this one, okay, and theta is a variable. What is the maximum value of f theta and minimum value of f theta? Can you figure out? Um, I don't know. See, this thing I can write as uh, square root of a square plus b square into a divided by the square root into b divided by the square root. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Just algebra. And I can I can take a triangle like this with sides a, b, and square root of a square plus b square. And let this angle be phi. It has a different angle. This is a new angle, phi. Okay. So this thing can become cos phi according to this triangle, and this thing is becoming sine phi. And this whole thing I can combine as sine of theta plus phi, and a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Okay, so sine of anything, the maximum value is plus one, minimum value is minus one. Okay, now the maximum of f theta is square root of a square plus b square. Yes, sir. Is it clear? So this is a standard thing, you have to remember. So using that thing, we can write the maximum of this thing. Here a is one, b is two. So the maximum of this thing is root five. A square plus b square. Is it clear? Root five yes. is the maximum, maximum of this one. Yes? yes. And t1 is minimum when this guy is maximum. So minimum t1 is this divided by root five. He is giving the theta as sixty degrees. Huh? Okay, uh, okay, we have found T minimum as this one, right? When this is the tension, T1. Okay. If you put T1 as that one, okay, you have to eliminate T2 from these two. Okay, we have got one already this equation. No? Okay, in this equation, if you put that T1 is equal to that much, what is the value of theta? Um, in this one, okay, put T1 as that one. Oh, that means that theta plus phi is, hold on, theta plus phi is 90 degrees, no? Then theta is 85 degrees. Do we know theta? Ah, we know phi. So theta plus phi is 90 degrees or pi by 2 and phi is tan inverse b by a uh, okay it's 1 by root 5 so what is phi okay adjacent by half of the means no it's two or either of one. So tan inverse. This is sine. 
So opposite side is one. So time was half. Uh, okay, I'm not getting 16. Okay, let me come back to this next time. This guy is saying it is, uh, and then he's saying P1 is 10 to 3. Then root three divided by root three. See, it's sine theta is coming root three. Um, we are getting something else. We are getting two with sine theta, no? Uh, a two is two times sine theta. P one C plus. That's why I asked you to check. Uh, a two is two. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, root three is root three is missing. Wow, this way I should be checked. You said everything is correct. This is not two, it's root three. Bobby, is it correct? T2 is 2T1, sine theta, no. Two will cancel. 2T, 2T1, so this root three will remain. Two will get cancelled. Root three will remain. Okay. So this is the limit you have out. So this will become a square root of four, and that is two. Square root of four that is equal to two, and this five will become uh, thirty degrees. Root three is what? Root three is cos, right? So this is root three. This is root three. This is one. So my phi is 30 degrees. Bhavya, tan phi is 45. Okay. So 1 by root 3 is less than 1. So phi is 30 degrees. Is that correct? Which implies theta is 60. Is it clear? Dash. Audio is not working. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. What about Bhavya? You are muting your uh, audio. Yes, sir. Understood. Ah. Uh, audio is muting, going mute sometimes. Right. Okay. Ah, uh, so the mistake is that root 3. What you ask me? Right. So, the inverse of the root 3 is 30 degrees, so phi is 30, so theta is 60, and that's what he has got. Theta is 60 degrees. Okay, so this is basically understanding your concept of people diagram and how to resolve the forces in horizontal and vertical direction. Okay, this one, three body diagram. First thing, second, is, sir. is it difficult? Huh? You can hear, right? Dakshi's audio is going mute. Yes, sir. Um, I was just going for this. Okay. Uh, so, is it doable? Bhavya? Yes, sir. I'm thinking. Dakshi? Uh, it was doable. Is it doable? B is simple, no? Mass is, sorry. Mass is down, weight is downwards. So what is the upper force on B? There should be a force to balance it, no? With the tension. Um, 
Yes. Tension of the string. And similarly, this, uh, see, all along the string, the tension is constant. Okay. So this is the same tension for the string. Right now, accept this. We try to understand this later. In the given the tension along any point in the string is same. And the string has a capability to pull. So the string will pull this block A by tension force. So the other two is acting on A. It has got a mass, right? Yes. So mg will be vertically downwards. You need the force on E. Friction. Uh, he would have said frictionless because yeah, major complications. Oh, smooth slope. Okay. So E is on E. Bhavya? Yes, sir. One is a other was a tension. Any other force? Um no sir, friction. Friction is not just smooth. Okay. Okay, suppose you consider this as x axis. This is x axis and this is y. Okay, on this block uh, A, this uh, mg can be split into two components, right? One is this one, other one is this one. And tension is along x. So on E, there is one force acting downwards. And this should be, this should be some force which is compensating, right? It's not moving. Getting the idea? On yes. Block A, there is a perpendicular to the surface, inclined plane, downwards. There should be some force to compensate it, no? What is that force? Um. Daksh? Yes, sir. What is the force which is compensated? MG has got two components. One is uh, perpendicular to the plane, inclined plane, and one is vertical. But one is along along the plane. This perpendicular to the plane, and this um, along. Sir. So the normal reaction would still be there, right? Yeah. There is a normal reaction here. And that so and that normal reaction force can also be split into horizontal and vertical components. Depends on what. See, you just have to choose one, two directions. One is along the plane, one is perpendicular to the plane. This is simple because uh, normal reaction is along y axis if you choose this as x and y, and t is along x axis. So only mg has to be split. Okay, but if you take vertical and have this one as x1, y1, then you have to split n and t, both of them, right? If you choose x1, y1 as reference. Then you have to split N and T, right? Both N and T will have components. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. So for the block A, X Y coordinate will be simple. Okay. For block B, X one X one Y one will be simple. Right. That is it clear. Yes, sir. Uh, so for Block A use x y coordinate system and for block B use x1 y1. Once you write the equation, it does not matter okay. which coordinate system you choose. So what is this angle? Okay. This angle yes, is, sir. This angle is what? 90 minus theta. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Theta is the angle of the plane with the horizontal, right? Yeah. yeah. This is vertical. Mg is vertical. And this yeah. dotted line is normal to the plane. So it should again yeah. be. See. It will be 90 plus theta. No, no. 
with the angle between horizontal and it will be theta yeah perpendicular horizontal is vertical perpendicular to the plane is normal there is angle between horizontal and plane okay so uh, perpendicular to horizontal is vertical and perpendicular to the plane is normal the angle between two lines and the angle between their normals are same mm -hmm. that is the way to remember it uh, there will be 90 minus theta yeah this will be 90 minus theta so this will be yes sir okay. so this will be uh, 90 minus 90 minus theta so, so whenever you see you just look at this between horizontal and plane so between vertical and the normal to the plane will be same if you have two lines don't scribble you have to raise the angle between the then the perpendicular of both of them will also make angle theta this is perpendicular to the first line this is perpendicular to the second line but the angle between the perpendiculars is also theta daksh is it clear yes sir just accept this one and think about it angle between two lines and angle between the perpendiculars of those two lines both will be same Okay, that answer. So now we can write the equation. I don't think it is difficult. Okay, so uh, n equal to n g theta, t equal to n g sine theta. That and for the block, it is t equal to n g. Okay, you have to represent the m. M are different, no? One is n a, one is other one is n b. This is n a. Call this n b. Okay, there are few more things which you can try. I'll put this in the folder. Uh, you can do this as homework. It's not difficult. So uh, here in this one, there is one string which is coming here. Here is t. The tension here also will be t. Same t. Here also t. Okay, a single string will have the same tension throughout. Is that clear? Yes, sir. There is the same string which is passing through two pulleys and fix it to the top surface. Since the string is the same, the tension is constant throughout. So using this drawing a three body diagram, and then this one, uh, tension is fine. This is much simpler. Only that there is a spring out here. Okay. I'll put this file in your folder, Google folder. Homework. This also homework. If you are going to some other questions, it should not be difficult. Okay. And uh, YouTube in the search box. You know the search box of YouTube, no? Bhavya. Yes, sir. This is the search box of YouTube. So type in that to physics wala Newton's laws of motion. Okay. Okay. You will get this playlist. Seven mm -hmm. videos are there. Uh, use PS two X, okay. So okay, sir. that is first three videos you can watch. Okay, so three hours, one and a half hours. First three videos. Sir, an academy no videos are there for this. Uh, this is better. Okay. If you want to try them, uh, you can watch both also. Okay. Okay, it's up to you. Uh, Daksh. Yes, sir. Uh, you can also look. Okay. Uh, first of all, this class is in your video your folder. Okay. Just open that folder and notice this name, Physics Wala. And there are uh, videos in it. You understand Hindi, right? Daksh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He speaks in Hindi, writes in English. Uh, okay. Just uh, watch these videos. So, next class, which is on Wednesday. So any, okay, any questions? Sir, uh, match will start new chapter. Yeah, tomorrow new chapter. Uh, next one. After trigonometry. Sir, which? Uh, what is after trigonometry? I have to search. I, I think okay, it's, it's mathematical induction.
Yeah, principle of mathematical induction. Yes. Okay. Uh, tomorrow same time. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. See you tomorrow. Take your class notes. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye, sir.